Welcome to installment number 188 of the mitzvahs as enumerated by Maimonides the Rambam. Today we are once again talking about positive commandment number 70, which is the commandment to bring an asham talui, a doubtful sacrifice um, for a, it's actually a guilt offering for a sacrifice that we are doubtful of whether or not we have, for a sin of which we are doubtful whether we not we have committed. And today we're going to be discussing the interesting fact that uh, for this sin, a ram is brought as opposed to the sin offering, which we know we we certain we are certain that we did this sin, just it was unintentional, and that is a, an animal of lesser of lesser grandeur, uh, lesser costs, and just not quite as um, as as pricey and beautiful as. A ram, and for this, our commentaries, uh, our commentators, give us quite a few beautiful explanations. So, number one is, um, you know, it's called an asham talui, where, which literally means where the the person is kind of hanging in the balance, pretty just kind of I'm not sure whether or not he actually committed this sin, um, which is why he's bringing this sacrifice. So he's kind of like in this middle ground, uh, not quite here, not quite there. Um, and therefore, he he's kind of in that category of, I may have done a sin, but I'm not sure if I did a sin. And in the event that he may have done a sin, he actually needs protection for being punished for doing this sin. And for this reason, he relies on the merit of our forefather, Abraham. He says, remember Abraham, who was so dedicated to you and was ready to sacrifice his precious son, Isaac, on the altar um, at which point God said, no, 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 uh, do not sacrifice your son. And that's when Abraham said, well, I came here to sacrifice something. And he saw this beautiful ram in the trees and took it and sacrificed that instead. And so this person who's hanging in the balance says, God, remember Abraham, be kind to me. Remember the way he was so dedicated to you and treat me kindly because of him. And thus he brings a ram uh, reminiscent of the ram that Abraham brought. Another beautiful commentary that uh, is explained on this is that um, when a person does a sin unintentionally, they're so upset about it and they worry and they eat themselves up over this uh, wrongdoing that they did. And so that in and of itself, that worry and that regret is itself a sacrifice or is the sacrifice. And so they can bring a, a sacrifice of lesser value because um, they've already brought this other sacrifice of themselves. Whereas here, the person doesn't have that feeling of regret because he's not actually sure that he committed the sin. So he's not feeling that. And so he needs to bring the sacrifice that is of greater value um, so that it, it encompasses all of uh, all of uh, the wrongdoing that he may have done. And a third concept here that is brought, which is contrary to these first ones, is that actually, um, you know, we, we've been saying that, you know, it's a doubtful sin, so it's of lesser nature than an unintentional sin that you've actually committed, right? So that one we know was committed here is, we're not actually sure, so it's lesser. This commentary actually explains that, you know what? Not so. Um, when a person does a sin, there are two ways that it is rectified. It is rectified in the world, uh, in this world, as well as in the world to come. God can choose to give us lesser uh, finances, um, lesser health, or whatever it is that he chooses to put upon us that will um, atone for our wrongdoings on this earth. And another way that he uh, atones for our wrongdoings is in the world to come. And we are told that the pain in the world to come is so much greater than that in this world. Although we know we only relate to the pain that we know of in this world that is so difficult. We know that a pain, the pain of, of ill health and the pain of difficult uh, finances and you know any difficult the sorrows that we have on this earth are so difficult, are so hard for us to deal with. Yet we know that that the, the sorrows in the world to come are actually worse. And if we had to suffer there, they're more difficult than, than if we were to suffer here. 
And that's why we would often choose to, God, give it to me here in this world. I don't want to have to pay for it in that world. And so here with, um, with the, uh, the sin offering, when we know we've done a sin, but it was unintentional. So we, are, so we, we bring the sacrifice for that sin and still there is going to be a portion of it that we will have to pay for in the world to come. While with this one, the commentaries explains this taka, this actually is a lesser sin and therefore we are able to atone for it fully in this world. And so we, we get a, a more pricey animal, uh, something a little bit more uh, value so that we don't have to deal with it in the world to come. Of course, we know that everything that God does is for the good. And even when we do experience service in this world, it's not necessarily God um, punishing us for things that we've done. We don't actually understand God's ways. We trust that everything he does is for our benefit and that if he's giving this to us, it's for us to learn whatever lessons it is that we need to learn. It is a journey that our soul must uh, travel and uh, we will be better for it. But we do nonetheless beg God and we pray that everything that he does for us should be revealed good and we should only be blessed with things that we actually appreciate and can see with our own eyes is good and healthy and uh, we should only be blessed with the ultimate of blessings. Have a wonderful day.